Hi everyone, Neil Snape. After a long, long uh, time off of doing YouTube, I'm happy to be back and share some some new uh, Lightroom techniques, maybe some Capture One, and some product reviews soon. So anyways, today we're going to just work through a, a test image for a modeling agency, um, a simple and easy uh, lingerie shot. So let's get started. Here you go. First off, the image that's on the left is the original, straight out of the camera, no adjustments done to it at all. The image on the right is a preset that I've used before. I rolled over it, I applied it to the um, uh, a virtual copy of the same image, and that gives me an idea of where I want to go. Anyways, let's go back to grid and select the image that we want. We can start from zero. If I take this one, I'm going to press Command apostrophe to make a virtual copy from zero. And just to be sure, I can reset it, which is a good thing because if you can see the little um, sigma here, that means it's on um, when it was brought into Lightroom a long time ago. It was actually on version three. So I'm going to reset this. And you see visually there's no real difference, but that just took off the process version. Now, if you want to make a, a black and white, it's really simple. They've moved it recently to this profile panel in a basic panel, and now it's up here. It's still the same shortcut though, it's V, V on the keyboard. So now that I've done that, you can see that it's um, not as contrasty as it was before. It still gives a, a fairly decent tone, but that's just an overall look of directly converting from the color image to black and white. So what I always do is I start off with temperature and tint controls and the temperature most cases I find for model pictures portraits I like to to try to towards the left at first and when you start to see the image just coming alive if I go too far to the left in this case, it's a little bit flat, so I want to keep a little bit of that grayness to it, which makes a little bit nicer volume. So somewhere around there looks good to me. Now this one is the tint. The tint also plays into it. If I go towards here, towards the right, it goes very magenta. So if you combine the magenta plus the blue together, it's um, quite a purple color. But if I go over here, it's going to turn into a greener color underneath. You can't see that though because we're converting from these settings into black and white. But it is definitely affecting the entire image that's underneath. If I pressed on color again, it would, um, well, I can do that just to show you. And you can see that it's very strange, but that's not what we want. What we want to see is how this biases the colors in the mix. So I'm just playing with that until it gets a little bit more volume. I think around there is good. Now, usually, if you've exposed correctly, you don't have to ch change any of the um, highlight shadows, whites and blacks at first. So we're gonna come back to that later. The most important thing is that you start off with temperature, tint, and then you go directly to black and white mix. Now, if I click on the target tool, anything that's underneath here, it'll move both of those or multiple sliders at once. So you can see that I can move those around. And you'd say, well, why is it moving around in greens and aquas when in fact that's under skin tones? That's because we moved our tint and our temperature around at first. I don't do it that way though, so I'm gonna press Command Z. It goes back to zero. And the target tool is put back as well. The way I do it is I actually just start sliding left and right, huge moves to 100 or minus 100 to find out where the colors are. And you can say, well, why don't I put the sliders back? Well, there's a good reason for that. Since there's nothing in the yellows, a little bit around her foot, you can see there's um, her foot that's a little bit hidden. There's a little bit of um, yellow in her, in her foot, but other than that, it doesn't do anything. So if you can say, well, the yellows, it's starting to show something, you could be almost sure that in the greens, it's gonna show. How do you reset all those the sliders in the um, in the panel back to zero? It's double click on the word. And that'll take all your sliders back. Now, I know that there was a little bit of yellow, so I'm gonna 
see what happens. Well, I don't want it to go darker. I want it to go lighter, but greens, that's where we can either make the skin tones very light or very dark because we know that this image now that we set our temperature and tint that it's very green underneath so lying underneath we're actually affecting those zones so I want to keep it a fair amount of volume in the picture so I'm going to play with that you can see that if I take my aquas lighter it's going to make the background as well as the um, the curtain very light or I can pull these down and make it a lot more flat but adding flatness to what you already had in the skin tone is not really what we want so the aqua we're not going to change too much just want to take a look there that's for me that's about right blues there's a little bit it depends on where you set the sliders in the first place at the bottom and do we want more detail in the blue or less detail so I think we want a little bit maybe even a little bit lighter if everything's good we'll go back up to the basic panel which is command one That'll take you back up there, or just click on the word basic. Now, if you're not sure that you want to um, not have a copy of exactly where you are now, you just press Command N, which means new snapshot. And everything we did up to this point is going to be conserved into that snapshot. It's a great way to come back to exactly where you were before if you've gone too far or you don't like it. Now, you could also make a virtual copy of all of the things that we had done to that point and from there you'd have different virtual copies with different settings but this way it's just a, a bit of assurance that you can come back to exactly where you are now let's try again a little bit more to just to make sure that our tones are living where we want them so what I'm looking for is just that it's a little bit lively you can see that underneath the legs it's changing quite quickly when I use the uh, temperature slider and I think it looks nice and smooth around there. It's not much different than before but maybe it's a little bit better. So here we can make or break the image by changing the tint. Now don't forget that we've already put a lot of adjustment into our black and white mix so these are going to be affected by what we have further down in the black and white actual panel. I'm just watching until the skin tones become quite uh, quite lively but not crunchy. That looks pretty good to me. Now we can actually test contrast. See what that looks like. I don't mind it when it's got a little bit more contrast. Okay, so we took the contrast up a little bit. Do we want to make it lighter, darker? Definitely not too dark, otherwise it's a little bit, the values are going a little bit too dark, somewhere around there. So actually it's zero, so I think my exposure was good in the first place. Plus 0.5, highlights. That's going to be the curtain in the background. You can see if you blow it out, well, it could have an effect that you like, or you can pull in some detail in the whites. I don't know how much difference it makes. Enough. It looks good there. So plus nine shadows. So shadows were fine where they were. Whites. I think I want to keep a little bit of reality into it, so that's why my whites are staying where they are. Blacks. You don't want to make it too too dark. You can see in the histogram below that sorry above that's actually showing where they are these are the highlights clipping warning signs you can turn on both at the same time with the letter J and you can see that I'm blowing out in my highlights and you can say okay well how can I fix that well you can take your highlights back down again you can actually leave it on if you like take your highlights down see if you can't pull in a little bit more detail there you go Press J twice, and now I've turned off the highlight warnings. So, if you wanted to change the highlights on our skin tones without affecting this, you could either mask this with a brush, or you can do it directly on the skin tones, which we'll probably do now. I think everything looks good to me. 
um, clarity on a type of picture like this where you have low depth of field it will just make the image um, very crunchy sometimes even negative clarity is actually easier to to retouch a bit of the skin if it's really sharp so that's about all there is to it I'm going to go to the brush tool now I'm going to go to one to one I'm going to go to the eyes and I'm going to use my famous and very easy to do a preset brush which is iris dodge and exposure so I'm just adding a little bit there and I'm going to probably even reduce the contrast even more that makes it a little bit lighter that's good there's not much else to do on this image other than we're going to another preset that I have is called skin smooth and because in this area in the skin so I'm going to take out sharpness reduce contrast and clarity and with that I have a lot less retouching to do you could say it's a little bit bumpy here it's very very sharp well I can do the same thing there and some problems in the there to fix later some of this stuff is actually easier to fix in in Photoshop later so we're not going to spend too much time doing that I'm going to lighten a little bit the tiniest bit I'm going to lighten the skin here by around 0.10 or so a very small amount by the way I use um, Apple's uh, magic mouse which has the horizontal scroll wheel which changes your size of your brush And I think that looks great. It's a little bit bright. I don't know why it ended up at point 0.1. That's good. I'm going to add one more for hair dodge and burn. Hair dodge. This can add just a little bit of detail into the into the hair if it's a little bit flat. It's just a little touch, and that's about all we have to do. I'm going to go back to one to one fit. I'm going to remember I said if you wanted to change the highlights, so let's make, move the highlights up a little bit in the whole face area. And that looks pretty good to me. That's about all there is to do it now. If you wanted more detail in the background, and the, there we can take the highlights down. We could even use auto mask, but I think in this case I'm not going to bother. I'm just taking the details down in there. Perfect. Now let's go over to Photoshop and I'll show you the last few things that I would do in Photoshop. So Photoshop's made for pushing pixels around. It's very good at that. Lightroom is not set up to do uh, pixel pushing, neither is Capture One. So I'm going to use the healing brush, which is shortcut is J. And it's what you usually do most of the cleanup work on your images really quickly in, um, in Photoshop with J, which is the healing brush. I'm using a Wacom tablet, so makes it a little bit easier for me to do uh, brush strokes but you can do this with the mouse as well she's got some funny scars I don't know where they came from on her legs now scars are it's questionable whether or not you should be taking them out it depends so this is a professional model and she would probably prefer not to have them than to have them shown but if you do portraits you don't want to be um, greatly modifying what nature has so you can see that there's a couple fine lines from the genes that are definitely temporary so anything that's temporary like a, a pimple a little uh, scratch or a line from from clothes those type of things are easily removed in photoshop and it's, it's quick and easy it still is very authentic when you leave them. Now, these type of lines that are underneath here, I can remove those as well.
because those are just folds from uh, leaning forward or whatever. Maybe she had jeans on as well up to there. This is a scar, so it's questionable whether or not I should be removing it, but I did. And there are just a couple, the tiniest little, tiny little dots, like little tiny pimples when, when you're young, you have those. Now, what I can do is because my lighting is not quite right, I have reflections off the floor and off the sides that are coming up, creating um, a double, well, kind of a hole of light there. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm not going to really remove it, but I'm going to just use a stamp tool in light mode. Um, since it's in darken mode already, I'm going to darken a little bit in there. And I'm going to control shift, click, choose lighten. And I'm going to sample below and I'm just going to even that out. I'm not going to remove it completely because that goes against the very nature of light. So if you want to respect light, you'll have um, better images if you only reduce things and not completely modify them where they didn't exist. Because light, your eye will always pick up things that are very false. So if you want to keep your pictures real, and if you're doing model tests for agencies, you definitely want to keep your pictures as real as possible because if a model shows up at a client casting, and they're vastly different than their pictures. They won't get hired. And matter of fact, it'll put the agency in a in a bad position. So agencies always want you to keep your images as pristine as possible and as close as to um, to reality. If they're test pictures, if you're doing editorials or advertising, well, you can do whatever you want. But if they're actual test pictures for agencies, you want to avoid doing heavy retouching because the agencies won't use those pictures for the same reasons I just told you. Oh yeah, we forgot that on her foot she has this big bobo. Now this one I could just do light mode as well, which I'm doing, or I could have just used J and just stripped that out. And then there's one, man, it's not even, maybe it's just a little mark on her foot. Here, a couple of things. And that's all there is to it. Command zero to see what it looks like. I could use this area here and I could actually pull the curtain over, make a selection and take that out. But uh, I think for today, that image looks great as it is. And that's all we have to do. So I will command S save W for close. And let's go back to Lightroom and there's our image. So the difference between what we did there, let's go back to the grid, pick the image that we did, compare. So you have your raw and you have your edited images that is beside. I'm not sure which actual. That's uh, between both. So your raw image where we took out just the, the slightest things, which makes it a little bit better. So thanks a lot for staying with me. I hope that you will subscribe and keep up with uh, any future tutorials I have. I will be doing some tutorials on hardware reviews uh, very soon. 